Okay, give people a chance to stretch their legs a little. Well, hello everyone. I'm glad you are with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're back here in uh, Los Angeles this weekend, and uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, let's see. Um, we are starting to resume our normal schedule, so I, I appreciate your patience. Uh, we suspended this uh, class for uh, uh, four weekends. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Okay. Um, I learned a lot the past uh, four weeks. Um, to me, it's fascinating every day. Uh, practicing Chan is so rewarding. I don't know about you, but practicing Chan is a necessity for me because it's how I maintain both my physical and mental health. In fact, as we are growing more and more, uh, and more people are joining us, and uh, I find it necessary, completely necessary, to uh, do chan every day to handle my stress. Mm -hmm. Stress um, only increases, and Unless you do Chan, you will not be able to take a break, okay? Chan is to take a break, and only is it necessary uh, because it uh, helps us uh, restore our balance, okay? Without restoring our balance, the stress will keep increasing and will wreak havoc on your bodies, okay? It's just the way it is. That's life. Yeah. And ordinary people, uh, when faced with stress, uh, if we don't do Chan, then we should encourage them to, to take breaks. Uh, in particular, exercise, uh, yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, whatever it takes, they need to do it regularly. All right? You are different. We are different in that we committed to doing Chan every single day, okay? And that's how we're able to handle stress a lot better, all right? We stop being victims of stress, not only that. Mm -hmm. When you do Chan every day and you come to the weekend and learn from, uh, from uh, uh, the temples, actually it's more than just maintenance, uh, but also you are, uh, imperceptibly uh, improving because I noticed that. It's fascinating. It's so rewarding to see when I went to Korea, I saw that, that our students in Korea have been improving steadily. Similarly, I came back here. I see that our people also have been uh, taking it easy. No, I mean... <laughs> uh, and so it's a... It's a fantastic process where we have now a community of cultivators at various levels from beginner to very advanced and you are cultivating together very much like the Pure Land, Western Bliss Pure Land, our small slice of the Western Bliss Pure Land here in the Sahara world. I'm very proud of that 
and for the fact that we all cultivating together and it's a fantastic Mm. This is what people will have, the advantage they have in the Western Bliss Pure Land. Uh, they are cultivating among bodhisattvas. Lay people, regular people, confused people, cultivate next to bodhisattvas. Okay? And, and you learn so much. It's so beneficial, that process. And that's what's happening here in the U.S., in our communities, in all over uh, our communities, throughout the world. So uh, thank you for that privilege, okay? That we are able to do it together, all right? And my job is much easier nowadays. Before I used to have to do everything when I first started at Lu Mountain Temple. Now we have a team of Sanghans who are quite uh, skilled, quite competent, not only that, uh, because uh, these people are, saw the benefits they attain from practicing Chan and practicing Pure Land and so forth, and they're committed to helping uh, more people um, gain the similar benefits as they do. Because uh, it's a good thing we have, we want to share it freely with everyone. Okay, we'd like to share with you, teach you, train you, help you, as much as we can, as long as you're willing to undergo the process, to go through the process. Okay, very much like uh, my Chinese masters uh, did for me. Uh, they helped me tremendously, and I'm, I'm simply doing the same thing for you, the next generation. All right? And part of my job actually is easier nowadays because of the track record that you established. It's very important for you, okay? We've been doing this for 17 years now. Very important for you to listen to the Dharma daily. Let's step it up, hmm? Meditating alone is good, okay? But you also need to rewire your mind, rewire your heart, because mm, that's how you stay away from trouble, stay out of trouble, and uh, this is what cultivation, one of the secrets of cultivation. Uh, why is it you are more successful than others? It's because you Avoid making mistakes, okay? When you make mistakes, you are pulling yourself down, okay? Mm. And this is why listening to the Dharma is very, very important. Uh, when you are driving, when you are taking a walk, instead of thinking and thinking and thinking nonsense and plotting and scheming for yourself, can you take a break? Just listen to the Dharma and open your heart, and open your mind. All right? That's very, very important. I found it to be extremely beneficial for so many of the members of our communities. All right? Mm. Any questions? Yes, Jane. Uh, just to echo your comment about listening Dharma, and uh, for this week, uh, a group of us are listening to your 2017 Dharma uh, about false thinking. That one was uh, very helpful. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I should listen to it again to myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Thank you for the feedback. Anyone else? Okay, we also, uh, today we also have the, the uh, last of the anecdote of Master Wei Shan. Mm. I like to jump to it uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, and um, make sure we finish it so that we can try to publish uh, the, the next uh, book on Chan. Okay, it's uh, 
na uh, doing a lion dance, okay? Mm. And again, feel free to ask any questions uh, anytime, okay? Yun Yen arrived at Wei Maung. Master Wei Shan asked, I heard the elder, uh, which is the honorific title of Yun Yen, was performing a lighten dance at Yao Shan's place. Is that so? Hmm. Uh, so background information, and uh, thank you for the, all this prep work. Chan Master Yun Yen Tan Shen initially studied under Chan Master Bai Chang, uh, which is, who is the master of Master Wei Shan, uh, uh, Bai Chan Huai Hai, for over 20 years. And he did not attain enlightenment. Later, he visited Chan Master Yao Shan Wei Yen and inherited and became a Dharma heir uh, of his. And he was enlightened by answering Master Yao Shan's question, what Dharma did Bai Chang speak? And he was master uh, uh, the, uh, of Tung Shan. So his, uh, uh, he was uh, staying at uh, Black Mountain there. Uh, seems like these uh, Chinese masters like to stay in mountains. Maybe it's cheap, huh? free land. Huh? Land is so expensive nowadays. It used to be so cheap in China, yeah, for free. You can grab it for free. Uh, and the founder of Cao Tung lineage. So it's interesting here that we're learning, I'm learning that Yao Shan, uh, Master Yao, Yao Shan was the founder of the Cao Tung lineage, who's now, which is now discontinued in China. Okay? And, and uh, so... Uh, so that tells you this particular Chan monk is something else. He has Kung Fu. It takes a lot to be able to found a Chan school in China back then. You're talking about five major Chan schools in China. They all have their own strength and characteristics. And, so, and therefore, this man here actually uh, has uh, some real skills uh, as far as I'm concerned. So... Uh, Yun Yen, uh, Yun Yen uh, is um, the Cao Tung uh, Chan School founder. Okay, so Yun Yen said, Yet Master Wei Shan asked, while the elder, elder was performing, did you, did, uh, did you put the lion head down? Chang Nung. Uh. Mm. So when he was performing, did you put that lion head down? Uh, Yun Yen said, when I wanted to dance, I danced. When I wanted to put it down, I put it down. Master Wei Shan asked, when you put it down, oh, mm. Where did you put it? Yun Yen said. When I put it down, I put it down. And uh, this is a lot of Chinese, too many Chinese characters for me. <laughs> what, what is he saying? Oh, yeah, it's the Chinese version of it. Hmm. Okay, so that's the end of the anecdote. Okay? Hmm. So, oh, let's go back. And uh, please uh, feel free to jump in as usual. Uh, I need your help to help me understand the Chinese language as well as the Chinese uh, uh, culture. Okay? Uh, so, Master Yun Yen uh, paid a visit to Master, Wei, uh, uh, to Master Wei Shan, so he went to he came and went to Wei Mountain. Back then, this is a beautiful tradition, very very important tradition. I hope that we in the in our times will begin to still observe it. Meaning that you hear of good known advisors, famous, uh, well. 
uh, known advisors, certified advisors like Ms. Wei Shan, then you want to go and pay your respects, okay? That is uh, extremely, extremely benef beneficial for your Chan practice, okay? It's very much like, uh, doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter who we are, no matter who I am, uh, I still have areas where I'm not clear, where I'm still confused, where I am in the dark. And so when you draw near a lamp, a bright lamp, naturally, okay, it will brighten the dark corners of your mind. It's so important. Okay, uh, and it's more than simply just, for example, joining it uh, on an online thing. Actually, it is no substitute for you physically going there, making the effort. Okay, whether it's jumping on an airplane, taking uh, taking a train, whatever, you have to physically go and be there. It's no substitute for it unfortunately, in my experience, okay? So you, sh you should feel, I hope this is very important tradition in China. It's, a, it's a, a tremendously profound tradition. That's why the Chinese Chan produced so many eminent Chan masters, because they, at this a certain, in the golden era of Chan, uh, they knew, they went and visited each other. Constantly, okay? Not just once, but quite often, okay? Because, as you know, look at yourself. Uh, you, almost all of you, okay? Uh, because I look at you, almost all of you are evolving so quickly that you no longer are the same person as uh, you continue the spiritual practice. You evolve uh, and you're so much better than before. You probably may not be aware of it. You're probably aware that you change, you improve for the better, but actually you're improving a lot more from my vantage points than you realize. Okay? Mm. All right. So it's very important. Again, so Master Yun Yin uh, is reinforcing this beautiful Chan tradition. He paid homages. He paid a visit to a good knowing advisor. Okay, because of that, Master Wei Shan uh, was compelled to help him. Okay, so here, here lies the issue, the problem. The problem in China is that we uh, don't know better ourselves. Okay. It takes someone who has better wisdom, higher level wisdom than us to help point the way for us. Otherwise, we'll be doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, that's why uh, I started by telling you, by uh, reminding you that it's very important for you to listen more and more to the Dharma talks. Okay, because you are presenting with different perspectives on how to improve yourself as a person, the insights as a person. Okay, uh, very much like some of you who came from externalist practices, you know, you have a lot of uh, erroneous perspective, erroneous beliefs that were uh, instilled upon you in the past, that if you find yourself, uh, it's so much more important for you than for those of you uh, who happen to have that problem uh, or happen to be in that situation, to uh, dump all that. Okay? Uh, you, if, it, if it's in contrast with the proper Dharma, okay, dump it. Okay? Don't hesitate. You simply are dumping garbage, that's all. Uh, these erroneous beliefs are extremely, extremely dangerous because they uh, make you prone to making mistakes and shooting yourself in the foot. 
more than you realize. So Master Wei Shan looked at Yun Yan, Master Yun Yan, and said, Ah, I heard for all the things in the world. He chose to ask him about the lion dance. I said, You, the elder, meaning Master Yun Yan at the time was already an established Chan master. And yet, he still went and saw Master Wei Shan, look up Master Wei Shan, just to check him out. Okay? Yu Yuan actually was proud of himself. So he came to check out Master Wei Shan. And, okay? And so Master Wei Shan looked at him and said, Oh, okay, he's, he's here to check me out. So uh, he picked up uh, his, um, one of Yun Yuan's uh, uh, quirk. He says, I heard the elder would mean that I recognize you, okay, as an elder of the Chan world, okay? You have some accomplishment. So you remember, Master Wei Shan doesn't mince words. He uses everything he says is very precise. It's for a reason. So he says, the elder, okay, uh, Chang Lao, or elder, is a person who is who has earned a place in the Chan world already. And he's respected in the Chan world. You don't become an elder unless you have some accomplishments and you have some significant contributions. Okay? So that's the state of Yun Yit, great master Yun Yit. So he says, so I heard the elder uh, was performing a line dance at Yao Shan's place, his master's place. So Yun Yin was doing a line dance at uh, uh, Master Yao Shan, his master's place. Okay, is that so? Okay, I don't know if uh, you know you uh, you still remember the lion dance. I'm familiar with lion dance here in the U.S. We have a lion dance on New Year's or Lunar New, New Year Day. Okay, and if he, that's a, one of the major attractions that brings a lot of people to the temple for once a year. <laughs> okay? And so, uh, so uh, the lion dance is rather strenuous. Okay? Very strenuous. And because you jump up and down, and it requires a high level of physical strength as well as endurance, which is remarkable for Master Yun Yin to be able to do. Okay? Mm. That's kind of interesting for me personally. That means Yun Yin actually, uh, he, that's his form of working out, I think. Okay, because with Tao Witch, you have you hold this lion head, you know, he's, he's holding this lion head here, and he's moving his body, moving his entire body, jumping up and down. Even the Chinese, I don't know about you, from what I saw in the Chinese movies, okay? Mm. In China only, not in Taiwan. Okay, they they do acrobatics and they climb on toes and and leap and you know and and jump and 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 so forth. Very spectacular. So for Master Yu Yin to be able to do that, uh, he has real kung fu, real you know martial arts kung fu, because that's what happens here in the U.S. The lion dance troops that we hired in the past are all like Shaolin or, or martial arts practitioners. Okay? So this tells you that Master Wei Shan was kind of intrigued about Yun Yin's uh, uh, lion dance, uh, lion dance performance, impressed by it. Okay? I can guarantee you that uh, Master Wei Shan would not be able to do that. I guarantee you. So Master uh, Yang Shan wouldn't probably be able to do that either, okay? <laughs> so it's kind of cool. So you see, it's a slice in the life of the Chan Monastery, where they have these visitors, and it's kind of fun. They don't come and say, hey, come here and do it, uh, you know, come here and I, and I teach you my way. So they open their heart. They open their arms and say, oh, welcome. Oh, you're from, uh, you from the lion dance troupe. Uh, tell me about lion dance. That kind of thing. Okay? Non-judgmental. Okay? Mm. And, uh, and uh, you know, background information, why is there a thing here?
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so background information, uh, Yun Yen Tan Shen uh, was uh, a disciple of Master Bai Chang. That tells you why he has a little bit of an attitude when he came and saw Master Wei Shan and said, you and I are of the same generation. Hmm? We have the same master. Master Bai Chang, great Master Bai Chang. And not only uh, do we have the same master, but I spend more time practicing under him than you. Okay? Because Yun Yen was practicing Chan under Master Bai Chang for 20 years. Even though he didn't become enlightened, it's actually, he said, like, I have seniority over you. That kind of thing. Okay? Like, like, some of my disciples says, I've been a master more than you. Okay? <laughs> so it's like, so I I'm, I'm more, have more seniority than you. Especially in the Chinese system where the Sangha is based on seniority alone. Okay? So the more Dharma years you have, the more senior you become, the more, uh, the, more uh, the higher your status. In our world here in the U.S., in American Chan, we don't give a darn about your seniority, okay? Uh, it's your kung fu that I'm interested in. Uh, whether it's you one day, or one year, or one month, or 10 years, or 20 years, I only look at you where, where's your kung fu? How come you with Master Bai Chang for 20 years, and you still are not enlightened? What is the matter with you? That's my, that's how I think, okay? Um, so anyway, so Master Yun Yen is, has a, is, a, has a, is pretty proud of himself. He says, I at least have the blessings to be able with, with Master, Great Master Bai Chang for 20 years. How many people can live with him for 20 years? It takes a lot of blessings, folks. Okay? And then, and then even though he didn't attain enlightenment, but that really built the foundation for him. So later... He, he, he came un, to under Master Yao Shan uh, Wei Yen and became his Dharma heir. Uh, and and uh, Master Yao Shan helped him uh, and by answering the question uh, 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 Bai Chang Shuo Shema Fa what uh, Dharma did Bai Chang speak? And because of that, mm. he became enlightened. Okay? So, mm, so it's kind of interesting that even though this is a very important point, even though Master Yun Yen did not become enlightened under Master Bai Chang, but actually Master Bai Chang never kicked him out. This is a very important point. Master Bai Chang never encouraged him to leave because he was still gaining great benefits from staying with under Master Bai Chang. So when he came over to Master Yao Shan, notice how he became enlightened. He became enlightened by, by thinking about, by answering the question, what did you learn from Master Bai Chang? Okay, and this is the second tradition, a tip for you. Oh, do not ever leave on your own. When you run to a great teacher, don't leave your own like the stupid Chinese Chan masters and lay people who left on their own, especially the ones I think I'm thinking of when you run to great, uh, great teachers. I'm not sure about Master Bai Chang, but I know that Master Ma Zhu, the six page chart, the uh, Shu Tou and so forth, all those great teachers, you don't want to leave them. It's true that by tradition, you should pay visit to accomplished Chan masters, okay? But once you found a great teacher, okay, uh, you don't want to leave and move on uh, because, uh, because you don't have enough wisdom to decide for yourself where, when you should leave. Leave it to the, this is a tip that the Chinese didn't teach their own. The tip I give to you is that because there aren't that many uh, masses here in the U.S., 
okay? And unfortunately, uh, you have to, oh, they are here in the U.S., they're not outside the U.S. I don't see that many teachers who are uh, competent enough. Uh, you will, it's much, so much more is the case where you find a teacher, you don't want to leave at all, unless you're told to leave. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so this is to me, it's interesting, this, uh, this uh, background information, I really appreciate it. It tells me a little bit, a glimpse, gives me a, a glimpse on how Master Yao Shan was helped by Master Bai Chang. Okay, Master Bai Chang, uh, also a teacher, Master Wei Shan, helped uh, build the foundation for Yao Shan to become enlightened. Okay, so what his teacher, Yao Shan, did uh, was simply to uh, build it to help uh, Yun Yen, I'm sorry, he helped Yun Yen uh, uh, leap from from uh, from the from uh, from the um, momentum he built under, from under Bai Chang, okay. Mm. This is this is something that's very important for you to remember, okay. And later he was his level is good enough. Uh, I um, thinking for him to be that Cao Dong is probably a pretty good good level of uh, of uh, of um, of uh, enlightenment for him to be able to found a Cao Dong lineage. All right. Mm. So, so remember the question I heard from Master Wei Shan. I heard that you did uh, perform a lion dance at uh, your teacher's place. Yeah. And you said, you said, yes, I did. Master Wei Shan asked, when the elder, you see how polite, how respectful oh, Master Wei Shan was. Okay? Uh, it's very, very interesting because this is a confirmation from Master Wei Shan that this guy is enlightened. The Chan Master is enlightened. Therefore, he keeps on calling him the elder, the elder, the elder. Okay? It's very, it's a very, uh, I, I believe this is very Chinese in that they don't call you by name. They call you by, you know, uh, addressing you in, you know, honor, uh, honorific st style, like calling you like uh, uh, Wei Shan, Master Wei Shan, instead of calling you by your name Ling Yo, or calling him by uh, Yun Yan. They call, they call the Master Wei Shan, would call, address him as the elder. So he recognized, again, he says, I certify you as an elder amongst the Chan world, which is a very big gift. Okay? Yin Yin can simply walk away and say, yes, Master Wei Shan recognized me, gave me the recognition for me to be able to do what I'm supposed to do as an elder of the Chan world. Okay? That's very important. He got certification Master Wei, from Master Wei Shan. Right there, in two sentences. Okay? I heard you perform a lion dance you know, at your master's place. Okay? And I heard, and also, when you did perform lion dance, what did the elder, uh, uh, did you put the lion head down? Okay? And... And uh, uh, Yun Yuan said, mm. uh, so Yun Yuan replied, uh, when I feel like uh, dancing, doing the lion dance, I danced. Uh, when I wanted to well, put it down, I put it down. So Yin Yin is very free. His, his message is very free. Uh, so the question is that, did you, when you did the, perform the lion dance, okay, did you put the lion head down? Uh, and so Master Wei Shan keyed on the, uh, the 
putting the high line head down. Okay? And Yu Yin said, hey, listen, uh, from my perspective, when I feel like doing a line dance, I danced. When I wanted to stop, I put a lion head down. All right? So, uh, Yin Yin is very free. He gives you a, so, some, a glimpse on, on how Yin Yin lived his life. He said, even though he was a Chan master, and whatever he does in his private life is none of our business, okay? But he's strong enough, physically strong enough to do line dance, and he felt like he could do, perform line dance to entertain his master and, his, uh, and the people, his temple, it was okay too with him. Kind of cool. Huh? Unlike us now, in the a, in a Dharma ending age, we all, uh, like Master uh, Chung Yin Sunim here, who has to appear like a adorn Sunim so that he gets the recognition and the offering from the people, from our people, okay? And so this is so important nowadays, especially in Jogi order, in the, in the Korean system or Chinese system or Vietnamese system. We taught about comportments that Master Shia also mentioned, where we have a, to carry ourselves a certain way to instill respect, to instill admiration, and and, and uh, faith in our followers, okay? Uh, that's what is stressed nowadays in our training for Sangha members, okay? And I admire it. I like it. I saw how the Vietnamese monks behave themselves and, uh, and the Korean Sunims and the Chinese and so forth uh, and, uh, and the Taiwanese and so forth. They have a certain comportment that Master Shui Hong has stressed. The four comportments of walking, uh, of standing, of lying down, of sitting, okay? And so all those four comportments are part of the, uh, the requirements of a left home person. Uh, but for Yun Yin, Master Yun Yin, he says, when I feel like dancing, I dance. And when I feel like stopping, I stopped. And basically he says, why do you ask about putting the line head down? Okay? And Master Wei Shan asked, uh, so when you stop and you put the line head down, you see, he says, Master Wei Shan is very flexible. He says, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, if, but, but you, when you have to stop, my interest, sir, uh, venerable elder, he says, my interest is when you stopped. Uh, when at the end of your lion dance, you put your lion head down. Where did you put it? Yin said, When I put it down, uh, it was put down. And that's it, I guess. Okay? And that's the end of the anecdote. Do you get it? <laughs> We're talking about two Chan patriarchs, okay, who are talking to each other. Okay? For me to claim that I understand, I don't. <laughs> So that's pull our collective wisdom together and try to decide what is the point here of this last slide. See, Master Wei Shan says, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm not, I don't care about when you, what you did when you did the lion dance. It's probably very remarkable and it's very entertaining. That's fine. Okay, I'm not going to criticize you for doing lion dance as a monk. You do entertainment, okay? And you indulge in entertainment. By the way, in the Bodhisattva precepts, we don't do entertainment, okay? But, you know, Chan masters are above it, okay? Are exempt from these things. So don't use the standards for lay people, for regular people upon the Chan masters. I get that, okay? That's the way Chan only said, but, but, but when you stopped, the lion dance, 
and you put your head, the lion head down, where did you put it? Okay? Uh, and Yi Yin basically says, I put it, I stop, I put it down, I put it down. Why do you ask? So from Yun Yin's perspective, okay, he says, I was having fun. I did what I wanted to do, okay? Uh, and when I was done, I put it down wherever I put it down. Meaning what? I put it down. Wherever I put it down, it doesn't matter. And I put it down already. Because this is true. Uh, is I, I was put down already, okay? Meaning I'm done. <laughs> and you still bring me back to the past. Yes, go ahead. There's some comments here from JC. Worship. Sutra and the Shrangama Sutra, there was a 50 uh, demons uh, steps. The 50 no. Skanda demons. 50 Skanda demons uh, levels. Uh, which level is it? It no, has nothing to do with the Skanda demons. Okay, anyone else? The 50 Skanda demons are, uh, uh, by the way, it's uh, very well explained by Master Shinhua. He's the only one who explained the 50 Skanda demons. Okay, he, he, he they published, his disciples published it in a separate book called 50 Skanda demons. Okay, it's a very good book. I would read it. Uh, I would recommend that you all read it, and uh, at least once, and don't worry about it. Just read it, okay? Yeah. And, and uh, that gives you some glimpses on the many things that could happen to you when you practice. There's a lot of uh, distractions and lots of uh, dangers that are waiting for you, and therefore you have to be careful, that's all. On the main thing from that 50 Skanda Demon section, as far as I remember, it's been a while, is that uh, don't think, think that you're special. Doesn't matter what you have. You can fly, you can you know, pick a worm uh, out of your body and so forth. You can see this, you can see that, like externalists like to, are so proud of. Okay? If you attach to any of it, the demons will, will get you. Okay, that's the main thing from that 50 Skanda Demon chapter. You read it and you see how many ways the demons can distract you and can entrap you. Okay, it's called 50 ways that the demons uh, uh, can entrap you. All right, that's all. And it, it, it deals with spiritual powers, it deals with, uh, with uh, different experience and wonderful experience that you will go through and so forth. And the main message is that don't think it's that so special. Don't think that you are special. Okay? That's all. It will come and go. Okay? It's not the purpose of Chan. Chan is for you to open your wisdom so that you help others, so that you have a, uh, you are, uh, you have wisdom to help others. 
including yourself. But mm, don't be proud of yourself. Don't think you're special. That's a common mistake that Chan practitioners make is that they think they're special. And that's why I tend to be violent for, towards people who think they're special. I beat them up mercilessly. I don't know, you remember when I went to Korea recently, there's a lady who is a big contributor to uh, a temple, a Korean temple, and she was uttering, uttering stupidity about here is the pure land. I almost put my fist on her, on her nose, <laughs> okay? Uh, because that's stupidity. That's a form of 50 skanda demon, thinking you special, okay? I don't tolerate it, okay? And if I see it happens, I will beat up on you and your ghost. I have no mercy. Okay? Now, anyway, nothing to do with 50 kind of demons. So here, Yun Yen is saying, he's saying that, you ask me about where I put down the lion head. Okay? From my perspective, I put it down. It was put down. Okay? Uh, so meaning that it doesn't matter where I put it down. The main thing is for me to put it down. Okay? Uh, so mm. he did not answer Master Wei Shan's where he put it down. He says, it doesn't matter to me. You ask me about where I put it down, I put it down wherever I put it down. Okay? So that's from Master Yun Yin's perspective. Okay, so what's the point from Master Wei Shan was making? So from Yun Yun's perspective, the elder's perspective, he's right. He says, I put it down, it's done already. I put it down wherever I chose to put it down. Okay, wherever I put it down never really, really mattered at all to me. Okay, uh, could be on the table, could be in a corner, whatever, probably later moved and so forth, put in storage and so forth. Uh, uh, but I put it down, okay? So he never answered Master Wei Shan's question directly. Okay, so what is Master Wei Shan's point then? Why did Master Wei Shan insist on asking where twice in that encounter, where did you put it down? Where did you put it down? And Master Union says, it doesn't matter why I put it down. The place doesn't matter to me. To me, what's important is I put it down. Where I put it down? Okay? Master Wei Shang says, I'm asking you about where you put it down. He's, Master Union says, it doesn't matter why I put it down. That's his answer. Would you be satisfied if someone asked you, where did you put it down? Go ahead, DTT. Uh, master. Master, do you hear from us? Yeah, I can hear you barely. Uh, yes, uh, Master, I think the the question of uh, Master um, Wei Shang is like a trick to to see if uh, um, really uh, Master Yuan Yan is still at, attached to uh, things he he does uh, in his uh, daily life. To to ask that question, if like if if he really let go of things he. He does uh, in daily life, so he 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 doesn't have a thought of that. So the the question is, where do you put it? Meaning that he to test if he's still attached to to what he does. The master Yue Yuan uh, does in his daily life. So his answer that he, it doesn't matter where he put it. That means he actually let go of what he does. So that shows his uh, 
uh, level of uh, enlightenment. So, very good. Good point. But according to you, why would Master Wei Shan ask where you put it? Keep on, kept on asking where, where, where. Whereas Yun Yin says, it doesn't matter where, I just put it down already. Wherever I put it. Yeah, maybe uh, he asked twice to, to make sure. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay. You got a point. You got a point from you. You understand Yun Yun, uh, Yun Yun's answer. Yun Yun's answer is that I put it down. Doesn't matter what I put it down. I put it down already. Okay. So the answer has uh, has has two meanings. Number one, uh, doesn't matter why I put it down. Number two, I put it down already. I don't even care. It's it's in the past. Okay. The past is gone. I put it down. Okay, uh, so he, you know, from Yun Yun's perspective, you got it right. He says, uh, doesn't matter. I just put it down already. I'm not attached to wherever I put it down. And, okay, uh, but if you put it, if you answer me that way, then I'm, I feel that uh, you're missing the point here. There's a reason why Master Wei Shan asks, where did you put it down? Where did you put it down when you stop? Okay. Yes, granted, you're not attached to where you put it down, but I want to know where you put it down. Okay. It's very much like a student uh, comes to you and says, hey, ask you a question. Uh, where do you put down the lion head? And you as a master says, I put it down wherever I put it down. It's okay for a student. Your answer is good enough for a student, but is it good enough for a Chan master who says, where do you put it down? Can you see the difference? Hmm? If you tell your, your student, master, where do you put your lion head down? You can tell him, I put it down wherever I put it down. Okay, I put it down already. I don't remember, I don't, I don't care. Okay, it's irrelevant of a, of a question. I just put it down already. Why do you ask? But this is not a regular student. This is a Chan master who says, where do you put it down when you stopped? Dancing, where do you put it down? Where do you put it down? Answer me. You got that? So you're right. Master Z, you're right. Yun Yuan is correct. His answer correct shows his level. He's, he's not attached. He can dance, line dance, what he felt like entertaining his master, his disciples, and then uh, uh, and, and he has no problem with it. So he's, he's not attached to it. Okay? And if when he's done, he's done. Okay? I agree with that from Yu Yun's perspective. I'm just curious personally about why Master Wei Shan asked him twice, where do you put it down, son? Okay? And another question, real, real related question is, is, it ends abruptly here, meaning that there's no conclusion. Meaning it doesn't say that Master Wei Shan said, hmm, very good, very good, like he would do to Yang Shan. He said, hmm, that's my disciple. Hmm, you are truly uh, a teacher of, uh, of, uh, of uh, you, you are truly a great teacher. Or, or uh, sometimes they say in the anecdote, uh, they stopped. Okay? That's the way Shan stopped. Meaning, conclusion. That's the way Shan, okay, I'm happy with the thing. Whereas here, it's abrupt. It says here, uh, the way Shan question was not answered directly. Yes, Jin. Hello, Master. Um, I just want to uh, translate the comment from Master um, Fa Chang Yu at the last page. I think that's relevant. Okay. So Master Fa Chang Yu commented that uh, what a great lion, uh, but there's beginning with no ending. So if I were there to uh, when Master Wei Shan asked where is the lion head? 
I would let out the couching lion, and then、um, have Master Wei Shan have nowhere to hide. So he would let out the lion, and so that Master Wei Shan has no place to hide. I just thought that's interesting because he's saying that 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 would be the ending he wants to add to the story. No,、uh, I don't know if Ah Chang is, but、uh, it's it, this is about the head of the lion and where you put the head. It's not about the the tail at all. So for him to introduce no, no, the concept no, no. of a tail, no, no, he he did not. Yeah, he did not introduce the tail. He just said the story does not have、um, end. That's what it means, I think. So he's saying the same thing as you were saying. The story did not end at the any place. So he he would. He would kind of end it that way. That's that's my understanding of the comment. So why is there no end? That's my question. Yeah, I don't know. Is to say there's no end? I'm asking. That's very the thing I'm discussing. Why is there no end? Because there's no end because Master Yun Yun missed the point, and Master Wei Shan. Out of respect yeah, for I, him as the I, elder of of the Chan world, he did not say anything. Okay, why not? Because Yun Yin came to Master Wei Shan with an attitude, "I'm your peer." That's a problem. Okay, this is the most important point today. Okay, Yun Yin. Is a certified Chan master. He earned his place as an elder. Okay. However,、uh, it's a very dangerous for him to go to Wei Shan's place and have that attitude. He should know better. That is, Master Bai Chan recognized Master Wei Shan as. A great Dharma vessel that's way beyond him, so that he says, "Your da, you." He told Master Wei Shan, who back then was called Ling Yu, say Ling Yu, you should go off on your own and teach and do your things. You should not stay here with me because you can do more without me than under me. Okay, that right there tells you about the potential of Master Wei Shan versus the potential of Master Bai Chang's disciples. He says Bai Chang basically says, according to the story of Master Ling Yu, Master Wei Shan says, "If I keep you here, I will restrain your constrain your development. You better off going off on your own." So that's why Master Bai Chang sent Master Ling Yu, Wei Shan Ling Yu, to to away from his temple. Okay,、uh, and so Master Yun Yin came to Master Wei Shan with a bad attitude. We don't know what is the proper answer. Okay, but to me, the most important point here is that Master Yun Yin has a bad attitude. He came to Master Wei Shan. And never was able to answer Master Wei Shan question directly. Where do you put it? What's so difficult about? I put it on a table. I put it on the ground where I stopped. What's a big deal? Why does Master Yun feel the pressure and say, "I put it down. I put it down." Why do you ask? It's done already. You ask about something that's not relevant. It's not important to me. I just put it down. Okay, which missed the point completely. The point is that answer the question directly. If you're a Chan master, you have wisdom. Okay, you're supposed to be able to answer the question, address the question, not avoid answering the question. So it shows you the different levels here to me. That between Master Wei Shan and Master Yun Yin, Master Wei Shan says, "Uh, uh, where do you put it?" He says, "Doesn't matter where I put it." 
Okay? It sounds offensive to me. Whereas Master Wei Shan simply says, you know, it's asked for specifics. Master Yun Yun says, cannot provide women for specifics. Therefore, you see, you see, and that is, to me, that's a conclusion. Because right there, there's a conclusion. Because right there, Master Wei Shan did not pursue him because he felt that Master Yun Yun did not get the teaching point. And because he's an elder, Master Wei Shan felt compelled not to embarrass him. Because he called him elder, elder already. And if he embarrassed Master Yun Yen and said, Oh, you know, if I were doing a lion dance, I would put it, you know, I would put it, uh, I would call Yang Shan to catch it for me. Okay? So if I were doing a lion dance, I could do a lion dance for you. After I'm done, I throw it towards Yang Shan and say, Hey, catch it! Okay? Master Wei Shan is free. Master Yu Yen, you see the level of freedom? Carefree? How carefree Master, Master, Master Wei Shan compared to Master Yu Yen? Master Yu Yen says, I put it down. I'm not attached to putting it down. Whatever I put it down, was put down already. It's irrelevant that you ask me again. Right? Master Wei Shan says, No, I want you to tell me. Where you put it down? Can you tell me where you put it down? Don't be so defensive. Okay? That's why he asked a second time. But Ma Yun says, no, your, 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 your question is irrelevant. Okay? Meaning that he was not able to answer Master Wei Shan's question directly. Because he has a bad attitude. You know, when you come to someone who is a sage, who has more wisdom than you, you have that kind of attitude, the sages will stop, will not teach you. Master Wei Shan, when he asked Master Yun Yun about where to put down the lion head, is because he saw Master Yun Yun's weakness, his blind spot, that he chose to point it out by bringing up the question of the lion dance, you see? And whatever Master Wei Shan saw in Master Yun Yun's blind spot, we don't know, okay? You have to be Master Wei Shan to know. But what we can tell is that he saw something in Master Yun Yun. That's why he kept on pursuing him. He says, where do you put it? Where? Could you tell me where? Okay? But Master Yun Yun missed it completely. And that's a problem of these masters. Master Yun Yen is very sensitive. He saw that, that, that Master Wei Shan is poking at him, and he's not comfortable. Okay? So he, he says, no, I put it down, case closed. And Master, because of that, Master Wei Shan never was able to point out to Yun Yen what was his blind spot. And that is the teaching point here of this anecdote. You met a great teacher who can shed light upon your dark corners, dark corners of your mind, and you missed it completely. So all the effort you made in traveling long distances, making sacrifices, okay, and enduring the weather, and enduring lack of food, and the, and the hardships, of walking and walking and walking and traveling. Traveling is very tiring, let me tell you. Okay? And you get there and get nothing. Meaning that he came there to announce himself as, okay, now I'm a big shot and Master Wei Shan recognized me as a big shot. Is that, is that what you Chan Masters all care for? That's all you care for? That Another great Chan master recognized me as an elder of the, of the Chan world. Is that all? Okay? That's what Master Yu Yang was happy with. And he was never interested in learning from, from Master Wei Shan. And point number two. 
Even though it's assumed that Master Yun Yan was higher level than Master Wei Shan. Let me turn the table around for you, just for the heck of it. Okay? Because the point is that there's no answer. There's no end. Okay? It's not meant to have an answer. It's not meant to have an end. Okay? But let me put it, turn the table around for you. Assuming, for example, Master Yun Yan uh, is higher level than Master Wei Shan, he still went to Master Wei Shan's temple. It should supposed to happen, okay? The teachers are supposed to come to you to help you. Be, believe it or not, the Buddhists and Bodhisattvas, when you reach a certain level, they care for you, they watch over you and say, ah, right there, that's, that's the future of Buddhism. I need to help that person, I need to help that person, I need to help that person. They do it without being asked, okay? So Yun Yen, you, you, you turn the table around, Yu Yin is high level in Master Wei Shan. He would say, Ah, Wei Shan, hmm, I, from, I heard from what, the way he teaches his disciples, the way he, he does things. I think I can sh show him a few blind spots. I, they would come. Yu Yin would then come to Master Wei Shan and say, Hey, I heard that uh, you go fishing. Huh? So, when you go fishing, where do you put the hook? Which part of the river do you put the hook? Would Master Wei Shan say, when I put the hook, I just put the hook. What do you ask, man? Okay, no. So if Yun Yin was high level and Master Wei Shan uh, would come to Master Wei Shan, he's also supposed to help Master Wei Shan. Okay, so these interchanges, these questions and answers are very important in, in Chan because that's how they help each other, how they certify each other. Okay? So, oh, so, so that's what happened here. What happened here is that, is a confirmation that, mm, that mm, Master Yun Yin still have things to learn and he wasted his trip to Master Wei Shan he simply came there and all he got from it is nothing confirmation okay I'm great I'm an elder he's an elder already he doesn't need more confirmation okay so he came to a jewel mountain to JMT and got nothing out of it that is a pity because you have to remember, Master Wei Shan would never talk about anything, would never say anything unless it's for a reason. So much more is the case if you are a Chan patriarch, if you're an elder, you come and Master Wei Shan look at you and say, and ask, talk to you, it's for a reason. Okay? And depending on your attitude, okay, what you can get out of it is if you are more open-minded or not. So let me finalize, make a final point. If Master Yun Yin, in the case, in the scenario, Master Yun Yin was higher level than Master Wei Shan, and he came to Master Wei Shan and paid him a visit, okay, it's in order to try to help Master Wei Shan. Okay, that's point number one. They still come to you and try to help you. Okay? Number two, don't think that they only come to help you. They also come to learn from you as well. Don't think that the Chan masters, I always think that I am high level than you, therefore I must teach you. It's not the case at all. Because you know what? This is a, this is a secret in Chan. Okay? Uh, even though, let's say, which is probably not the case, I'm higher level than you, okay, than you, okay, and I talk to you, okay. Do you think it's only, for, it's only one way? No, it's, it's also two ways because, you know, we, it's very highly possible that we have the same blind spots, Agree or disagree? 
Sometimes I discover my blind spots from looking by looking at your blind spots. I say, because when I see your blind spots, I, say, I immediately ask myself, am I that way? Hmm? When I see you lose your temper, I say, would I lose temper over an insult? Should I lose my temper? Okay. So actually, you learn from the low level people as well. You don't necessarily always have to learn from high level people. So that's why Master Yun Yen, assuming he's high level in Master Wei Shan, he came over to Master Wei Shan, okay? And Master Wei Shan asked him, Where do you put a lion head? Okay? Uh, he could potentially learn from Master Wei Shan as well if. He's more open-minded. Okay, folks, this concludes uh, the discussion at the level of the patriarchs. And I apologize. I'm no patriarch. I have no business talking about it. But since no monks ever dare discuss this, Okay, no Chinese monk ever explained this. And Master Bai Chang, uh, what is it, Fa Chang there, said nonsense about, you know, the, there's no end so forth. There's a purpose, okay? Uh, because right here, I feel personally that Master Yun Yin missed the boat. And to me, it's very helpful for me because, okay, I would not bother wasting my time looking into union. This to me is very unimpressive of union to behave in this fashion. I don't want to learn this. Okay? If you have that kind of attitude, it's imbued in everything you say, in everything you do. And that's what you spread this to the next generation. Okay? You have to be more open-minded. You have to be more humble. Okay? You have to believe that you learn from low people who are lower level than you as much as you're helping them. It's a mutual learning process. Again, because I may be higher level than you, but it's not surprising for me and you to have the same blind spots. It's easier for me to spot it sometimes from you than from me. Does it make sense? So that's the point here. Okay? You may be an elder, you may be a Chan patriarch, but you should be more open-minded. Okay? Lessons are everywhere. Okay. Does it help? Okay. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Mm -hmm.